Brightburn 2. Uh, I, I didn't really think that Brightburn was going to bring about a sequel, but uh, it does seem to make a bit of sense considering the movie did find some form of mild popularity. It came out at a very stacked time. It came out to middling critical reviews and it actually went on to do pretty well. So now the question then becomes, uh, well, I should say well for the budget, well for the budget. I don't want people to think the movie was a romping success, but for what they spent, yeah, it did pretty, pretty damn good. And I think that when it comes to horror movies, working in the realm of a very short budget is going to probably be uh, what is best because I think it really, it really focuses the filmmaker to tell the story and to present it in a way that is going to be as effective as they possibly can and and not an over bloated thing like we see now in a lot of tentpole pe features but anyway coming over here to bloody disgusting uh dot com uh it says brightburn 2 james gunn says there have been talks for a potential sequel it says back in may sony released david yarvoeski's Yarv brightburn a super su horror superhero hybrid produced by the guy who knows something about horror uh, the film told the origin story of supervillain Brandon B B uh, Breyer, and it pulled in over $30 million worldwide on a $6 million production budget. So does that mean we're getting a sequel? Over on Instagram this weekend, Gunn simply said, I think I'm tied up for the next few years with Suicide Squad and then Guardians, but we're talking about a sequel. And in the final moments of Brightburn, it opened up the film's world, teasing that Brandon isn't the only super person out there. Endless sequel potentials. And that is one of the things that a lot of people, I think, really enjoyed about Brightburn was the possibility of what could come next. And, you know, like, you know, there's going to be an interesting thing when when you can set up a movie uh, that at the end of it simply says, um, yeah, like there's more out there and you kind of set the possibilities for what's to come. And when you set the possibilities for what's to come, I think a lot of people are uh, more interested to seeing what could be coming next and more interested to uh, start speculating. And that in itself brings a lot of hype. It brings a lot of um, a lot of uh, speculation amongst fans, which then leads to a lot of positive word of mouth and from then leads to potentially more sales. I, I think there was a conversation I oversaw today on Twitter where they're trying to talk about cinema score being like an actual valid metric like people go and they look at cinema score as something as more valid than maybe let's say rotten tomatoes but I, I i don't know i mean the truth of the matter is no one i know in the film watching sphere all my movie you know movie buff friends no one ever comes to me and says hey have you uh, have you happened to hear the cinema score do you know what's uh you know what that whole thing's about like do you know like is it you know no one ever talks about it it's a metric pretty much only used by some people on Twitter and people in social media, and it's there for a reason, but I don't think it does as much as people think that it does. But that being said, it's, um, uh, you know, it didn't even do that good. I'm, I'm referring to Brightburn. I believe it got like um, a C or something on cinema score. I think when I did my aftermath breakdown of it, I had to make the cinema score uh, image that they use. They didn't put one out yet. So I took, I took an, a pre existing one and I just made a new one and then tweeted at them and said, by all means, feel free to use it. Uh, they never did, but that's entirely okay. But anyway, Brightburn two, uh, I haven't seen Brightburn yet. So when I finally get around to watching it, I'll be able to start breaking down more of what I think about the possibilities of it. I love the concept. I think that, uh, James Gunn, I was only a producer on the movie. A lot of people think that he's a mastermind behind it. His, I think, cousins wrote it and his friend directed it. So if, if they're going to start working towards a sequel, he doesn't necessarily have to be involved outside of just maybe a, connecting a couple dots here and there. Ultimately, uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens once the film hits home video and whether or not Sony greenlights another one. Who knows? Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. But the budget is small enough and it made five times the production budget worldwide, which is well over the three times required. Uh, that is the general metric for getting a sequel. So, you know, there is that. So, all right.